What do you know? Another bloody day of the markets for our growth stocks. We're going to take a look at Tesla stock, Google, Nvidia, Affirm, Roblox, Rivian, Lucid, and Blink. I'm going to do a deep dive technical analysis on all these names. Tesla stock we did yesterday and it just closed just below $900 per share. I actually sold some new puts today at the 850 strike and the 800 strike. The ones at the 850 strike I want to buy and the ones at the 800 strike I don't want to buy. The trend line right there is 799.44. So worst case is we touch this trend line in my opinion and we bounce back up. So I don't see us hitting $800 per share around this time. Anything's possible. We can always break this trend line. This is just the trend line that has been supported and never touched ever since COVID hit. We're down $32 today and just closed just below 900. Like I said previously, it's highly likely that we do come down to the 150 EMA and possibly the 200 EMA. So the 150 EMA is currently at 852. There is a gap from 840 to 850. So it's possible we fill that gap, bounce up and continue higher or consolidate in a range from 850 to 950 and eventually break above once we get to February and March. Again, there's just no signs for a bounce yet, but the risk reward is getting better and better for entering. Like I said in my previous video, I'll put it up in the cards. If you're looking to trade Tesla stock, 850 is the best entry for you. If you wanna hold Tesla stock for six months or more, then this is where you buy. Right now, $900 per share or lower, you're buying. The lowest will be by the end of June in 2022 is $1,000 per share. So if you're getting in now, you got 10% upside from this entry if you're holding periods at least six months. The next stock we're gonna look at is Google. So Google's been on an insane run. It looks like we're due for some consolidation. We'll likely trade range bound for a while and trade around the averages. How do I know? I think because uh, if you just look at the RSI, we're making new lows. So it, it looks like we've run out of buyers. From here, we could see a eight to 9% pullback down to the 50 EMA, which is the green ribbon, which we don't do very often on Google. So we're on the weekly chart for Google. We hit COVID here. We went all the way down to touching the 200 EMA, made an insane rally, and then I have only really touched the 20 EMA on the weekly and never looked back. And right now we're sitting at 20 EMA at 2,818. It's possible we bounce here and continue higher because that's what we've been doing ever since we recovered from COVID. If you bring it down to the daily chart, you'll see the same thing. You know, we've come down and touched the yellow ribbon, which is the 100 EMA, and now we're touching it again. And the yellow EMA has been a really good risk reward for Google stock. And that's currently sitting at 2,814. So again, Low 2,800s right now for Google stock, if you're looking to invest or hold for six months or more, fantastic risk reward opportunity. If you're looking to trade Google, just know that in September, we did dip down to the 200 EMA, which is the red ribbon, and we spent some time trading below there. So if you bought Google when it first hit the yellow EMA, you would have bought September 18th, and then it wouldn't take very long. It would take one month for you to break above and be profitable. So Google's a lot more consistent in its upward trend. So anytime you do get those pullbacks down to the yellow or the orange EMAs, great time to add or get into a position if you're looking to hold for a few months or more. Video here on the daily chart, it really likes to respect the 50 EMA. So you'll see that it really likes to hug it. If it ever gets away from the 50 EMA, then it typically pulls back and then it might trade just below and up and it chops around, but it likes to really hug that 50 EMA. If you ever get a dip really below it and touch the yellow ribbon, which is the 100 EMA, again, great risk reward opportunity to add to the position. But just know that there's a lot of times where it consistently bounces off of the 50 EMA and continues higher. So if you just take a look back, you'll see just at the end of September, we came down, broke through it, but then within a week we were above it and then never looked back. If you look just before that in August, touched the 50 EMA, went higher, didn't look back. Touched the 50 EMA in July and then never looked back. February of 2021 broke through the 50 EMA, which was at 138. And then it took just a month and a half to break above, to be back positive, and then again, never look back, just kept bouncing above. So NVIDIA is another great risk reward opportunity to buy anytime you're at the 50 EMA or the 100 EMA because it doesn't spend a lot of time below it. And again, the current 50 EMA is at 282, but it's been a while since we've tested the 100 EMA and we did get very far away from the averages. So the further away we get from the averages, the more aggressive the snapback should be. So technically speaking, we could chop around here and then eventually, the 100 EMA could come up to about 260 and we could touch 260. So if you're looking to get into NVIDIA to hold for a while, 260 could be a great entry, but just know if you're a long-term investor, then anytime we're at the 50 EMA or trading below it, 
Great time to add to your position. However, if we bring it up on the one hour chart, there is actual signs of bottoming. We have the RSI turning to head up, the stochastic turning to head up, and the percent R coming up. So there's a possibility that we did bottom at around 270 today, and then we're starting to make our way back up, or at least be range bound and chop around from you know, the high of 390 and a low of 270. All right, next we have a firm, and a firm is continuing to downtrend. We had an insane run over the past months. This one isn't really showing any signs of slowing down. We take a look at a firm on the daily chart. You'll see that we spent a lot of time really strong with an RSI of 70 or higher. You'll see August 30th when we first got to an RSI of over 70, it went straight to 80 and we were at $90 per share. And then from August 30th to November 8th, we went from there to a high of $170 per share on a firm. We're currently down 46% from highs and it looks like we could come all the way down to the gap that's around 75 to 85. It's possible. There's still no signs of us bottoming on a firm either. You have the RSI continuing to head down. Nothing is turning up. We have the stochastic turning to head down and the MACD still going down. So good news is whenever there is less volume, then it's usually signs of sellers getting exhausted. Look how low the volume was on, on all the selling today. You see on a firm here, the volume, look at this, this volume bar is so much lower than the previous ones. That means we're typically exhausting the sellers. Take a look at Tesla stock as well. The volume was much lower than the previous days. Again, typically we're exhausting the sellers. Anytime there's a decrease in volume, it's preceding a reversal in trend. Same idea with Tesla stock. You see these two huge green volume bar days. We're moving a lot higher. Then we have decreases in volume and the volume is trending down from then on until we get to a point where we have our lowest volume day And what happens next the next day is our selling so it's possible not guaranteed is on Tesla stock We have increasing volume increasing volume as the selling continues continues to continues Boom the next day is a really low volume selling day The day after that could be the reversal and the bottom is possibly in just like the top was in when we had our lowest volume day here at 1240. Now when we take a look at Roblox, everything's still trending down, but I do like these inside candles here. When we have inside candles here, it does show signs of a start of a reversal or a bottoming. At least we're not going straight down, we're starting to consolidate around here. That means there's buyers stepping in. So it's possible that we consolidate from a low of about 93 to a high of about 105 for a few days and then actually start to make our way back up. But again, the indicators are still showing that there's no signs of reversal, but the candles are showing signs of the start of a reversal combined with decreasing volume. Since Roblox is a newer stock, these ribbons don't help a ton. Same thing with a firm. There's not enough trading data and trends for me to look back on to really decide how the stock behaves with the EMAs. So I'm not even going to talk about them. Next up, we'll take a look at Rivian. Rivian is going straight down, selling off and I didn't close my put that I sold at the 90 strike, but tomorrow, if we end the day below 90, I will close it for a loss because it's very possible that we just continue to trade down for Rivian because the valuation is still at 81 billion with such low sales. And, and Lucid, the, the valuation is at 62 billion. So I have more faith in the, the short term trading for Lucid over Rivian, where Rivian could get sold off more because they've posted such aggressive losses. However, they still have a lot of cash left in the bank. In terms of a business, they're likely to do great, but in terms of stock price, Rivian's still overvalued compared to the other EVs, so it, it has more room to fall to the downside. Also, in terms of Rivian, there's not much trading days for me to look at, so we can't really say much, but it still looks like there's no real sign of bottoming. Uh, there's still a decently high volume day today. It was higher than the previous days, so there's not a there's no real signs of us slowing down. We'll take a look at the one hour chart to see if there's any signs of bottoming. Not really. It still looks like everything's turned to head down. So there could be more downside for Rivian. On Lucid stock, we did have one of our lowest volume trading days ever since we started to make this move up. So that's a good sign. We have the squeeze mob here decreasing. So it's going from red and it's likely it's gonna to start to turn green. So I think uh, we could bottom around $35 per share on Lucid and then you know, consolidate and turn to head up. So I think we don't have a far way to go on Lucid stock in terms of selling off. As an example, Lucid and Roblox are showing the best signs of bottoming and turning to head up. Whereas a firm isn't showing real signs of slowing down in terms of selling. Rivian isn't showing any signs of slowing down. 
Tesla stock isn't showing signs of slowing down either in, in selling. The good news is I think we'll have the bottoms in this week and then we'll start to at least trade sideways and slowly move back up. Blink is the last name we're to talk about here and Blink's just been getting slaughtered. We uh, exploded. I remember I sold a strangle back in the day and the strike was 48 and I actually closed it out because and ever since then it just went straight down. So we went to 48 and we're currently down 43% in one month on Blink. 43% in one month. We have a lot of support here at the $26 level. You can see back here we had consolidation and we've touched 20, 20, we've touched 25s here, we touched 26s here, we touched 26s here again, and now we're currently at 26s. So the question is, does this hold as support? Very possible. Again, we have the decreasing volume. I think we could possibly have a wick down to the 25s, bounce up and then consolidate around 26 to 27. I have uh, puts that I sold at the 28 strike and I rolled down to the 26 strike. In terms of the indicators, again, no signs of us bottoming. RSI is going straight down, the stochastic is going down, and the percent %R is still trending down. The EMAs are all out of whack for blink stock, so we're not even going to take a look at those. Again, no signs of slowing down there. Back to the daily chart. We're below all of the EMAs. All we really need to hope for is that Blink doesn't fall below 25 because if it does, then it looks like there's pretty much unlimited downside all the way down to about $12 per share. That's the analysis of EV and tech stocks. Let me know if there are any stocks you'd want me to take a look at in the comments below. Let me know what stocks you're currently invested in. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Thanks so much for the support. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market with options trading, day trading, or swing trading, you're definitely going to want to subscribe. I post videos breaking down stocks and strategies to earn enough income to achieve financial freedom. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button, and I'll see you in the next video.